Hey, John Dillon here with another tutorial from visualbroccoli.com. You know, one of the things I'm asked a lot by people that I, I work with is, you know, I want to create a, a branded presentation uh, for my company or my organization. And there are many different ways to do that. And here is one such tutorial. This one's going to be a combination. It's fairly simple, actually. Just a few steps to go through in PowerPoint. In fact, I think it's more set up in PowerPoint than it is in Photoshop. But we're going to go ahead and bring in our company logo. And our mythical company today is Medex. And we're going to go ahead and create a title slide. And we're also going to create... Uh, our standard slide, which is be pretty much the bulk of our presentation, where we have a header up here with our, our logo, and then we have a watermark of our X, um, or what we call the bug. This could be here in the background, so it's real subtle, but allows me to put images in here. So, first thing we're going to do is jump into Photoshop, prep our logos, and then we're going to go into PowerPoint and create our custom background to bring in our logos. So, let's go to Photoshop. So here is our logo. Now this happens to be a fairly good quality logo. Um, and that's really kind of be the key thing for this look right. So try to find the largest size logo. If you're grabbing logos from your website, uh, the cleaner the logo and the larger the logo, the better it's going to look. And if it's really pixelated around the edges, uh, that's just not going to look real nice. But just pointing that out to you. Uh, again, you can download these uh, assets right from our website. You can follow along. So what I want to do, first of all, let's get rid of the white background. To do that, I need to get my layer unlocked. You notice there's a lock icon here, and we've talked about this in previous tutorials. But I'm just double click on the background layer to make sure it's unlocked. I'm just going to do OK. Lock is gone, and now I'm free to delete the white background and make it transparent. So if I hit the use the magic wand tool and I click in here, it selects all the white. In fact, um, even some of the gray here, which is not what I want to do. Uh, an easy way to correct that very simply is um, if you look up here when you select the magic wand tool, you'll see the tolerance up here is set to 45. And simply what this means is it's going to sample colors. So the greater the tolerance, the more colors it's going to sample. So if I pick, for example, 90, it's going to sample things that are white and similar to white. And you notice up here, these things are getting closer and closer to white. So it's sampling, um, you know, going up a few different stops. So it's actually starting to grab more of the gray. So the opposite holds true. If I go to 20, it will probably give me the perfect. Yep, perfect. So just selected the white. So it's minimizing the sampling. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to hit my shift key so I can add the inside of the D here as well. Now if I hit the magic delete key, we have transparency. Voila. I want to go ahead and add a drop shadow to this. And let's go ahead and change the angle here. Let's go 120. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in 120. And it just kind of brings it up a little bit. And I'm good. Now I can just go File, Save As. And let's just go ahead and create a folder here. We'll call this uh, Medix. And I'm going to save this as a PNG file. So we've reserved the transparency. And it's going to ask me what my options are for PNG. And I'm just going to say None and do OK. And we're done. But wait, there's more. What I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a different slide here. And what I'm going to do is I can save as. So let's just go ahead and save as. So I have my MedX. I'm going to save this. Save as a Photoshop. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this. I want to preserve that. And we're going to call this one now the MedX Watermark. And we'll see it was a PSD file. Looks good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually select. I'm going to use the uh, polygonal lasso tool and just click in here and click around the X. And 
and I'm close enough there, hit the enter key, it'll make the connection. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this to its own layer. So I'm gonna go up to image, actually layer, I apologize, I am a shortcut person, so I don't go up here too often to do this. I usually use a shortcut, control J for my PC or command J for a Mac. And it's gonna layer be a copy. So it's gonna make a new layer with the copy. And now I can turn that off, and now I have my X. So let's bring this X here. I wanna actually turn off the drop shadow here. And we're actually, to a certain degree, gonna kinda of destroy this a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, add an effect to it. We're gonna actually add a color overlay. And we're gonna change it from red to white. And I turned something off here. I turned off the effects. Let's turn the effects back on and let's turn off the drop shadow. There we go. So now this is white. So I'm gonna add just another layer, bring it down here and change this color to blue. And this is just more of a visual because it's hard to see that white on that transparent background. Oh, let's make sure it's blue. There we go. Now what I want to do is, I'm going to actually do a few things here. I'm going to drop the opacity here to about 10%. Now that's kind of still kind of really stands out. I want this to be really have a subtle watermark. And kind of a technique I use is I'm going to go up to Filter, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to soften that up a little bit. Now what I'm seeing here in the sample is actually of the image, but I'm going to look over here on my screen and that's what I want. I want to soften the edges up a little bit and that's actually looking pretty good around five pixels and that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead I want to just get rid of this excess because I don't need all of this. I'm going to just kind of crop, collect that, poke out the eyeball and now I'm going to save this as a watermark. And again we preserve the transparency we need to save it as a PNG file copy and voila we're done let's go in the PowerPoint and get that set up